Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us on learning why we should let our dogs chew. We're going to learn today three very important reasons why you should let your dog chew and encourage them to chew appropriately. My name is Jonna Devereaux. I'm a clinical pet nutritionist, owner of Fetch RI, and the director of the Bow Wow Labs Nutrition and Wellness Center. So before we get into reasons why we should let our dogs chew, let's first discuss what defines a long-term chew. A long-term chew is going to be something that should both taste great and hold your dog's attention for more than 10 minutes. Now there are two different kinds of long-term chews, a digestible one and a non-digestible one. A digestible chew is going to be any chew that can be eaten and through digestion be converted into compounds that can be absorbed and utilized by the body. For instance, a bully stick or a deer or elk antler would be considered a digestible long-term chew. A non-digestible chew, on the other hand, would be one that is fine for chewing, but it should not be ingested as the body is unable to break it down. So for instance, a bone made of nylon or a wooden stick would be an example of a non-digestible chew. So now that we know what a long-term chew is, let's find out why we should incorporate these into our dog's lives. Reason number one, chewing is a natural behavior and dogs chew for a variety of reasons. We know this because observation shows us this. I mean, leave any dog to their own devices and undoubtedly they will get into something they shouldn't. We've all known dogs that chew on sticks outside. And though this may seem natural, it isn't. They're just substituting behavior that would have been exhibited when breaking down their own prey. As a side note, wooden sticks are not safe for dogs and you should never allow your dog to chew on them as they can puncture different areas of the mouth and could potentially cause damage to their digestive system. Now, having said that, I'm a big advocate of using digestible chews, specifically those that are natural and in line with a carnivore diet like bully sticks, deer or elk antlers, tracheas, animal parts that a dog would chew on if in the wild. Now in nature, dogs are hunters and scavengers and instinctively they chew on parts of their prey as well as found parts from animals that have been left behind. Uh, think of deer antlers that have been naturally shed through the change of seasons or even parts that other predators might have left behind. Now these parts provide a variety of different nutrients from vitamins, trace minerals, minerals with a lot of importance like calcium and even macronutrients like protein. Of course, it depends on what chew you're delivering or giving your dog as to what nutrients they'll be getting. In addition, Chewing naturally increases their overall well-being. This is because when a dog chews, it releases serotonin and dopamine, two very important neurotransmitters in the brain that support mental health and that promotes that feel-good vibe. You know, dogs in every stage of life benefit from chewing and long-term chews, but it can be especially helpful for those in their puppy stage. Not only can it help with the transition from being removed from their litter mates, but it can also help with teething and relieving the pain and discomfort that comes from teeth growing in and those falling out. Chewing is also a really good way to beat boredom, which brings us to the second reason to provide long-term chews to your dog. Chewing promotes mental stimulation. And when your dog is mentally stimulated, they are actively engaged in the task at hand. It is said that a dog will tire faster from mental activity than from physical activity. Now, I'm not encouraging you to stop walking your dog or giving them physical exercise, but think how helpful this information is on rainy days or on those few times when you're unable to take them on a walk or play ball with them outside. The reason for this is because the act of chewing requires concentration. It tires a dog faster because they have to determine so many variables like, how am I going to eat this? What do I have to navigate around? How am I going to chew? Which side of my mouth am I going to use? You know, all of this is going on in their brain as they enjoy their long-term chew. These are all really great things that engage their brain. And remember when I mentioned chewing beating boredom? Well, how can you be bored if you're occupied with the task of chewing something that you really enjoy? The third reason that we should encourage chewing is because it promotes dental health. And this is probably the most important in my eyes. When a dog chews, it promotes the production of saliva. Saliva helps to flush away any bacteria that might have built up in the mouth. 
Now, this is the same bacteria that is responsible for bad breath and is directly related to cardiovascular health. Chewing is also great for dental health because it decreases plaque and tartar buildup. In the wild, dogs would eat the fur, elastic muscle tissue, and the bones of their prey, which would provide a natural brushing effect on their teeth. Our domesticated dogs aren't eating this type of food that provides this natural brushing effect. So these long-term chews can fill this void in their diet and can help remove the plaque and tartar by scraping against the teeth and removing the debris. In addition to that, when your dog is chewing, they are exercising their jaw muscles, which helps promote jawbone health. And as I mentioned earlier, it also helps with puppies in the teething stage to learn how to chew appropriately and how to promote those baby teeth to fall out in a natural way and one that's less painful. So the more you can encourage chewing, you promote salivation and decrease the potential for plaque and tartar from building up, the better your dog's overall health is going to be. So now that you know how great appropriate chewing can be for your dogs, how often do you let them chew? Technically, you could allow your dog to chew daily depending on which long-term chew you are giving them. If a long-term chew is high in calories, mind you, you would want to limit the frequency to only a few times a week. But at minimum, I would highly recommend that everyone incorporate at least one long-term chew session into their dog's weekly diet. So what do you need to do? Well, that's the easy part. Dogs know how to chew. Instinctively, they know to start chewing on something that they find desirable. So if you give your dog an antler or a bully stick or a horn or a raw marrow bone, whatever they find desirable, they will start to chew. They just know what to do. But what do you have to do? That really is the question. Well, you have to ensure that your dog is enjoying their long-term chew in a safe manner. Obviously, you never want to leave your dog with anything that is edible if you are not in the room to supervise, even if your dog is one that you think will not swallow something inappropriately. And by inappropriately, I mean swallow something without chewing it first. You never know how much your dog may swallow that may cause a potential choking hazard or a potential for obstruction. So you should always be in the room just in case. You know, you could even take it one step further to ensure your dog enjoys their long-term chew safely. There have been a few devices that have come on the market that provide a safe way for you to encourage your dog to chew on a long-term chew while reaping all the benefits of such while being safe at the same time. One of these safety devices is actually called the Bully Bunny. And I'd like to thank Bow Wow Labs for letting us use their product for this demonstration. Now this device is a safety device. And how you use this is that you take an appropriately sized bully stick. Now, normally bully sticks are a dog's favorite. I've never met a dog that doesn't like a bully stick. Here's the problem with the bully stick is that they love them so much that when they get down to that last one to two inches, most dogs no longer have the ability to use their paws to hold the stick in place to continue chewing. So instead, they put the entire last bit into their mouth and chew or swallow, which leads to a potential for a choking hazard as we discussed, if they swallow it in full. There have been many dogs that have swallowed the last one to two inches. And what that does is again, lead to the potential for a choking hazard or intestinal obstruction. I cannot stress how important this is that we keep them safe because you are avoiding a trip to the emergency room and hopefully a fatal outcome. So this bully stick, the bully buddy, right? Goes into the bully buddy and the bully buddy actually holds it. And what you do is you tighten the screw and this bully buddy will hold the bully stick so that your dog gets all of the enjoyment and you get all of the peace of mind that they will not swallow it for that last one to two inches. It's an ingenious device that once it's screwed in properly, you can see by my pulling on it that it's impossible to remove if secured properly. So obviously whenever you're buying a long-term chew, you wanna buy the appropriate size long-term chew for your dog. And that goes for any safety device you may purchase. This would be for a large size dog. They also have one here that they've given us for a small size dog. Always buy the size that is recommended for your dog's weight and chewing style.
Now, if you have a 95 pound dog, you should not be buying them something that is only three inches long, expecting it to be a long-term chew. That is something they will put in their mouth immediately as they won't be able to grab it with their paws and it may lead to a potential hazard. So having said all of that, what I will say is happy chewing. You now have three phenomenal reasons as to why you should promote appropriate chewing with your dog and making that a part of their weekly regimen to promote overall well-being, dental health, mental stimulation, and to support their natural instincts for chewing. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. And please always supervise your dog anytime they are chewing to ensure they are safe while enjoying the act of chewing. And please, if you're considering it, look into a device like the Bully Buddy as it really can help make long-term chewing safer. Thank you.